welcome you all here today and thank you so much for coming. In the next hour we'll have three speeches, including hearing from our esteemed author Kay Bell, and then a live performance of some of Kay's songs. And afterwards there will be, well, afterwards there's refreshments right now, and uh, you'll be able to purchase the book and uh, have your book signed by Kay herself. So wearing my other hat, I'm also one of the editors of Kay's book, so I'd like to say a few words about the editing process. Sometimes in a career you get to work on projects that you just know you were destined to do. So is the case working as an editor for Kay Bell and her book Lyrically Speaking that brought two of my strongest passions together, helping authors succeed and my love of music. And for this I am truly thankful to Kay for the opportunity to be part of this project. I have known both Kay Bell and Jim Shipstone, who you'll be hearing from in just a moment, for many years, starting from the time we met at songwriting retreats in the early 2000s. So when Kay and I saw each other casually at a music event at Marsfield Cafe Parramatta a few years ago, we caught up on our lives as friends do. Kay told me she was writing a book affectionately with the working title, Where's My Elton John? A book that offers 180 ready-made song lyrics for musicians, producers, singers and TV, TV and filmmakers who are looking for original works. We discussed having an overall structure that would tie the book together as Kay wasn't entirely happy with how the book presented. She had the overall theme of seasons linked to emotions in place, but the book's overall structure needed tweaking. With the seasons clearly defined, Kay has created a book where the reader can cherry pick which song lyrics they turn to depending on their mood at the time. For example, armed with this book, writing music for film or TV is simplified. Music producers and music supervisors who need to underpin scenes can go to the relevant section of Lyrically Speaking that would enhance the scene. For example, a dark scene with the music score can go straight to the book's winter section to find lyrics to match the music. Personally, having Kay's manuscript at hand last year helped me when I would come home from numerous visits to hospital to see my seriously ill dad. My mind would be racing and I found that reading one of Kay's song lyrics at random took me to another place and calmed my mind. After that initial discussion and witnessing her light bulb go off, Kay had a clear direction on how to enhance the draft she already had and knew how to move forward with the book with confidence. There were three editors for this book. The massive job of taking on the initial draft was done by Deb Doyle, followed by the American Balboa Press editor. Sometime after that, Kay called me to clarify a few things and then hired me to do a final proofread and copy edit as needed. Just to be clear, no editor has edited Kay's lyrics per se. Handled with respect, the song lyrics were considered in their own essence, with the layout treated like editing poetry, like poems or making musical notes. Therefore, there was only a light hand in editing, strictly as needed, while maintaining all poetic license and the sense of the line. We had interesting discussions about what makes a song. If a song has a music, and no lyrics, is it an instrumental or a song or both? What's the difference between lyrics and poetry? If there's song lyrics and no music, is it actually a song yet? From these discussions we were then clear to make the distinction between references to a song or song lyrics throughout the book. For the record, song lyrics is when there are only words waiting for their music like Kay's book. I admire Kay's lyrical way of writing a normal prose, that is in all the other parts of the book that are not song lyrics. On page two, even though Kay says the following of herself, to me this sentiment also applies to her book overall. Kay says, I'll continue stretching myself as far as I can, searching out possibility with the aim of meeting potential. On page 72, with the insight for the song, This Is Our Home, even though Kay is talking specifically about this song aimed for children, it also applies to the words in the book overall, replacing the words children with people. She says, I feel these words have the potential to cross geographical boundaries and find common ground where children the world over can share one smile. On page six, Kay wishes her readers a lifetime of extraordinary seasons filled with endless hours of being happily immersed in your own creative endeavors. Of the book, the Balboa Press editor from the United States said, this book very pleasantly caught me by surprise because I've never seen anything quite like it. In a time when so many people treat their intellectual property like a jewel among thieves, enter Kay Bell, who publishes an entire songbook filled with really lovely lyrics in the hope of attracting songwriters to them. It's gently brilliant in its conception, and I'm surprised more lyricists aren't doing the same. 
By publishing it, you also offer yourself copyright protection in case someone tries to use the lyrics without your authorisation. I hope you find your work in John, whoever he or she may be. As an editor for me, there's nothing more satisfying than working with an intelligent writer who intently considers the suggestion for change, hears the reasoning, and then makes an appropriate call. Each time I suggested a rewrite and attempted a draft of a paragraph to explain the point and get rid of any ambiguity, the rewrite that came back was so much better and so elo eloquently and lyrically written. If you work with Kay, your ideas and suggestions will be heard. I'd like to introduce Kay with fanfare as Australia's very own female Bernie talker. <laughs> but Kay is not happy with that title, as she rightly says that she's her own person. So instead, let me introduce you to an intelligent, passionate, award-winning Australian lyricist, a newly published author, author <laughs> the incomparable Kate <laughs> is Jim Shipstone, who wrote the foreword in the book. James Shipstone, let's be flat James. James Shipstone, or Jim, or Sir James to his friends, has a lifetime career in the music industry. From his early days in the late 60s in London doing covers in his band Night People, to the start of his music <laughs> management career in 1977 in Western Australia, to managing director of BMG Music Publishing for Australia and New Zealand, and director of AMCOS, Jim has been there and done that. Jim knows how to recognise potential and he helped break emerging artists such as the Eurythmics, award-winning composer Phil Buckle, and Urshali Ovich in this country. Jim plays the piano, sorry, today Jim plays the piano and is a songwriter. He generously gives of his time and advice to songwriters, musicians and singers alike. He is a music industry consultant to various organisations such as National Songwriting Associations, the New South Wales School of Spectacular, Performing Arts High Schools, the Australian Institute of Music, all while establishing a music publishing company with Ursula Jovic. It is with pleasure that I welcome to the stage Jim Shipstone.